Hi, Flash Hour is my name. When I'm not making wedges of cash in the city, I'm blanning around on my bike. It's fast, mean and expensive, not unlike myself. It'll go 0 to 60 before you can say bye, 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 sell, sell, sell. And it's got more horsepower than the Grand National. You see, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. I'm talking speed, acceleration, forces and motion. If Jones is my name, and uh, chauffeuring Mrs. Gideon around is my game. Uh, and of course, cricket. Yes. <clears throat> well, it's all a matter of uh, distance over time, isn't it? Yes, I've got the time, so you better give me distance. Ha <laughs> ha! No, only joking. Uh, what I'm really talking about, of course, is speed and uh, how to determine it. Yes, and you won't go far wrong if you always remember that speed is distance over time. Speed equals distance over time. So if you cover 50 kilometres in half an hour, your speed will be 100 kilometres per hour. A graph helps to calculate your speed. Distance on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. Starting off, I begin to cover a greater amount of distance in a shorter amount of time. This can be shown as an upwards curve on a graph. That is because my speed is increasing. Eventually, I reach a constant cruising speed, which is never over 50 kilometers an hour. No, never, never over 50. Unless, uh, of course, when it's over 60. Ha oh, ha, only joking. Mm. You can always tell, of course, when you've reached a constant speed, because the uh, curve is a straight line. Yes, and you must always give a very good lookout, in, in case anything untoward should happen. Yeah. Good grief, what do you know? This calls for an emergency stop. Uh, sorry about that, old chap. Oh, dear. Almost caught that little critter. Lady Gideon would never have forgiven me. Yes, she's a founder member of the RSPCA, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Aristocrats. Ha <laughs> ha! Only joking, of course. Right then, uh, the wonderful thing about making a graph of your journey is, uh, here you are, here's my graph, is that uh, at any point along this curve, you can work out your speed. You see, the, this is the point where I started off. You see, there's nothing there. I uh, gradually gained speed, and this straight line is my constant speed. Then I slowed up because that little critter Jump down in front of me. Look, there you are. He's squashed on that line there. Or, or not, as the case may be. Uh, right. Uh, what if, for example, I wanted to work out my constant speed? Well, that's this straight line here. All I do is I uh, draw a line from the beginning down to the time axis. There you are. That's the beginning of my constant speed. And then uh, my constant speed ends around about there. There you are. I'll draw another line down. Smashing. And that gives me, uh, that gives me my time during my constant speed, which uh, uh, is 50 minus 20. That's 30 seconds, which, of course, is half a minute, if you're clever. If I want to find out uh, for how far I travelled at a constant speed, uh, I draw another line across here. There we are. Goes to uh, 200. And another line, I trace it across. Uh, there we are, reach 700. There we go. Right, so uh, in order to find out the distance I travelled at my constant speed, it's 700 minus 200, which, of course, is 500. And uh, that time there was 30 seconds, that's half a minute. Now, 500 metres is, of course, half a kilometre. 30 seconds is half a minute. Speed equals distance over time. So that's 500 metres divided by 30 seconds, which is 16.7 metres per second. So what's that? That's uh, 60 kilometres an hour. Well, we can't all be perfect, can we? Mm. Anyway, yes, uh, when that little critter ran out, of course, I slammed on the anchors, slammed them on, and uh, there we are, I slowed to a halt. But, of course, the time was still ticking. So my line carries on, but I'm not moving, so it's flat. A little bit like uh, I'll be when Mrs. Gidding claps me around the head for being late. And with that in mind, I'd like to bid you farewell. Ta-ra, toodle pip, and thank you. Ta-ra. <laughs> Just listen to that. Sorted, sweet as a nut. Now then, big shout going out to the forces of motion posse in the house. If you're in the house, make some noise. Just me then. All right, well, that geezer in the Rolls Royce, right, it was well sorted for time and distance. But from where I'm coming from, it's acceleration that impresses your mates. Oh, yes. And the better you can understand it and illustrate it, the more impressed they'll be. Now then, this extremely fucking motor in a couple of seconds time will be accelerating because I'll be putting my foot down on the juice pedal. See you later. <laughs> Now then, this racing track is wicked to demonstrate what on earth I'm talking about and put my sweet as a nut motor through its paces. Now, we know that speed equals distance over time. So all I've got to do to get my speed is measure my time between the distance markers I've located at the side of the track over there. You'll see them as I blast past.
If we measure the slope at different points along the graph, we get Andy's speed at those points. If, for example, we want to find out Andy's speed after he's been travelling for eight seconds, we can simply draw a straight line to the graph at eight seconds and calculate its slope or gradient. To calculate the gradient, we need to divide the distance by the time. In this case, the distance is 200 metres minus 60 metres, which is 140 metres. Similarly, if we extend the line to the time axis, the time is 11.8 seconds minus 5.8 seconds, which equals 6 seconds. The gradient is therefore 140 metres divided by 6 seconds, which is 23.3 metres per second, and that's 84 kilometres per hour. To get Andy's speed at any other time, we can calculate the gradient at these points in exactly the same way, and we end up with a table of speed against time. Now this is where the clever bit comes in. If we plot these points on a speed-time graph, speed on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis, we can work out acceleration by measuring the gradient of the speed-time graph at any point. In the manual, he says that my kicking motor does 0 to 90 in 9 seconds. But as you can see, I've synced it up and it does it in 8.5. Nice one! Equally crucial is the ability to show the stopping distances of your motor, which will be serious considering the amount of money I've spent on my tyres. Stopping distance is calculated with your distance time set up. So, if I slam on the anchors at 40 kilometres an hour, let's see what happens. The measuring wheel is used to determine the distance travelled in each case. Although the time taken to stop doesn't change very much, the distance travelled increases dramatically. At 40 kilometres per hour, the car travels 9.8 metres and comes to a stop in two seconds. At 80 kilometres per hour, the car travels 25.1 metres and comes to a stop in 2.7 seconds. And when you know your stopping distances, write them down and post them through the letterboxes of everyone's house in the neighbourhood. Then they all know who's got the fattest tyres in the place. Wicked. OK, baby, ciao. Now it's time to see what real acceleration and deceleration are all about. And just in case you think I'm cheating, here's the Speedo captured live on camera. Read it and weep. As you can see, the graph's gone completely off the scale. I'm doing about 230 kilometres per hour. And that's legal, at least on a racetrack. The mass of a motorbike compared to a car is much less, and this means that the bike gets started much more quickly. This shows in its acceleration. Of course, the fact that I have a fantastic engine hidden in there also has got a lot to do with it. And apart from smashing the opposition when it comes to acceleration, emergency stops at the same speeds as an equivalent car will also prove the bike to be much more efficient. So remember, speed equals distance over time, and you get that from your distance time graph. And time equals money, so I'm out of here. Acceleration is wicked, and you work it out from your speed time graph. Plus, there's an awesome night happening this Thursday at Club Crucial. Give us a nod, and I'll put your name on the door. And remember, if you're planning on making an emergency stop, the faster you're going, the longer distance you'll travel. Oh, and uh, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. Yes. <laughs> Toodle-pip. <laughs>